Now to all of you living in the great state of Arizona, looking to play some online poker and stack your chips to the moon, I totally get it. You know, the state of online poker has been sitting in a gray area for many years with legalized sport betting happening all over the place. We're still not seeing much happen in the realm of online poker, but the good news is that's okay because currently the top side to be playing on in terms of traffic and soft players at mid-state games, meaning the $200 and $500 no limit games is Ignition Poker. Now, there's some other options available such as America's Card Room, Bet Online, or even Bovada, but Ignition is a bit better than all of them in my opinion. You know, I've been playing on here for over six years and typically log in a few times a week. The software is great for playing on a desktop or phone. You could also multi-table up to four tables at a time if you so choose. Cash notes are always fast and secure via crypto, which takes less than 15 minutes to receive whenever you decide to withdraw money. Now, the bottom line here is I could keep going on, but I'd rather just pull up a recent session I played so you guys can see the software and just how you know bad these players are. Uh, of course, if you'd like to learn more about Ignition, grab a brownie is for getting started here or even just get on our poker newsletter where we send out one email a week on it new updates we'll also have some resource links directly below in the description for now let's get into some of these hands first hand i played was pocket nines and i'm going to give you my thought process on this one we are going to hit a nine on the river and i tried to make it look like almost a bluff i guess which is the reason i made this move um but you're going to see it right here i figured he'd either possibly call this thinking it's a bluff or obviously he would just insta fold really just depends but when i saw that nine on the river you know i was just licking my lips like oh yes we got it and let's say he had a you know possibly holding a four here would be pretty sick for him too but you know whatever he insta folded and i don't really regret that just based on that we weren't going to make a lot of money on that anyways trying to put in a value bet on the river he was probably always folding that and it is what it is all right, next couple of hands, I had king sevens for whatever reason. This one was offsuit. And I was kind of just in like, you know, check fold mode here. No reason to bluff at this at all with two other players. And I think he is going to bet and we're just going to fold it. Okay, next hand, uh, king seven of spades. I made the call. I think this guy made the call as well. Okay, nothing there. Really just looking for a king on the turn. We got the backdoor flush draw to go with it. All right, so we got another free card or a free card right there, but, um, you know, another hand where king seven did not work out for us. So this was another fold. Okay, even with that small bet, yeah, it's kind of weird. It almost looked like that flop was the exact same um, and whatever river card as the one before with king seven, which is kind of weird. All right, here we go with pocket fours opening up in late position. Now, I've said this quite a few times. If you guys are playing in these cash games, you should be opening uh, with you know, small pocket pairs. The reason you want to do that is instead of just limping into hands, you know, when you raise, you know, let's say like an ace, uh, deuce six comes on the board. If you put a continuation bet in, you can get a lot of players to fold because, you know, you raise pre-flop. So they're going to think you have an ace. It makes more sense to raise with small pocket pairs as opposed to limping. I just got to point that out. All right. Anyways, um, pocket four is not looking too bad here. Obviously we're just losing to a nine which this guy doesn't necessarily have to have, and I know that, so we take it to the river. Jack on the river, you know, obviously some hands like King Jack, Queen Jack got there, but <clears throat> for us, uh, it held up, and um, yeah. 
All right, so if you're still with me, like I said, we still got that ace-king hand coming up. You don't want to miss it. But this was a good one as well. So we had a king-queen suited in, you know, mid-position. We're going to deal with the raise here. Now in this spot, you could do a couple of things. You could three-bet this hand if you want, which is fine. You could also just call. E either way, either play makes sense. So I just called because we had three people to act behind us. And this was actually a decent flop for us. And I think I, I probably played this uh, the best I could have to get as much money as I could have. Now, we do have the second nut flush draw with the king-queen. There is an ace on the board, which is always a little bit disheartening to see, right? But, you know, we did hit the flush on the turn, which is looking really good for us, right? We're only losing to the ace high flush at this point. Can't be really thinking that. This guy's going to put in a bet. I'm going to kick it up just a little bit. Not much. I didn't want to scare him off. So I just raised it to like 30-ish um, to see if he would make the call. And really just looking for a blank on the river, you know, uh, like a, a 10 of hearts would be good. Nine of hearts, something like that. Okay, that wasn't the greatest river card, um, but I don't know if this guy was really putting me on a three to begin with, and I was trying to figure out the right sizing for this, so I went with uh, about $100. He called pretty quick. I have no idea what the guy had. I didn't check it, but, um, you know, probably... Probably some kind of ace. Um, a set would have been sick there if he lost with that. But I think maybe like an ace in that in that spot. Okay, so this is the hand of the session, guys. We got the ace-king suited. And like I said, I think that you need to be a little bit more careful um, with ace-king suited. Because like I said, I've lost a lot of money with it, just shoving with it. Because like I said, um, a lot of the time when you do that, you could be up against pocket aces or pocket kings. It, you do run into those hands, unfortunately. So I opted, you know, really just to, to, to play this a little bit passively to see the flop. And it was a great flop for us for a couple of reasons. All low cards, um, and we've got the nut flush draw, uh, and like I said, the, the worst spot we could be in here, um, is we're up against, uh, aces or Kings aces would be sick, but we still have outs, right? So I bet into this, he is going to re-raise. So he is representing, I would say either aces or Kings here. Queens just felt unlikely, but I was like, you know what? There's no way I'm getting away from this hand just based on this flop. All we have the safe cards out there, um, you know, and I'm just hoping he doesn't have pocket aces at this point, but there's just no way to get away from this. Okay, so when I saw that, he told me everything I needed to know. He's got a big pocket pair, and I just came over the top. He is going to make the call, and uh, fortunately it was kings and not aces. But we needed that miracle card, and we did get it, guys. So you got to look at that and realize that I don't know what the math was exactly on that, but we still could have hit an ace on the Turner River, but we still had that, you know, nut flush draw. And I think flushes are something like you hit them, I want to say like 28 to 30%, maybe, if that's right, especially in that spot. Uh, so obviously he was ahead. It was unfortunate for him, but fortunately for us, we had an ace king suited. I played it passively. I didn't get crazy with it pre flop doing any crazy, like four or five bets or all ins. Um, and yeah, man, it, it totally worked out for us in that spot. So I was definitely happy about how I played it. Uh, if you're really just getting one thing from this video and what I'm talking about, you know, be a little bit more careful with, uh, ace king, especially when it's suited. Uh, pre-flop because like I said you can lose a lot of money with it so just be aware of that anyways I hope you guys enjoyed this as always thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next poker video